Welcome one and all to our Sunday morning service. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. God is good and all the time God is good. You know, it's a little bit rainy out there, but we thank God that it's not cold. We're, 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 sque we're, we're surfing into summer and it's a good feeling. I don't know about you, but I like this weather. It's wet and not cold. It's wet and nice. But we're here to serve God. Last yeah. week we, we did, last week was Pentecost Sunday. And you know, it doesn't just stop at Sunday morning. It carries on through the week. And I hope that your week was filled with his spirit. And now you're here to even magnify him. So we're going to go into our call to worship at this time. When I look back through history and consider all the sacrifices in every war and I try to grasp it all, come to grips with it, stand in reverence of all those willing to give their lives for something bigger than themselves, I am stunned by the sheer numbers. All those lives, all those families serving their country, I can't always comprehend it. My heart is not big enough to take it all in, that each one didn't come home. What they lost for their service, what we gained for their courage. Today, I stop to remember. Every single number is one soldier, one sailor who got up in the morning and put on a uniform, one Marine who answered the call to fight for freedom one airman who knew the cost and went anyway, one man or woman who paid the ultimate price for many, and the freedom I live in now. Today, I remember. have a lot to pray about and I want you to turn into your songbook to song number 219. It says, God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my savior lives. And the chorus says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, a life is worth a living just because he lives. And we don't have to just sing it during Easter time because he's risen. And um, we can sing it throughout the entire year because we are trusting that the God who is sitting on the right hand of the Father, is interceding on our behalf. So we have a lot to, to give, to pray about. Um, we have Bonnie and Justin, as um, someone put in the, John had placed this in for their salvation. So we'll, we'll pray that God will open their hearts and, and that we at the church will be a good example for them to see Christ within us so that they will receive that salvation. I will pray for Cheryl's shoulder and baby, I think is um, Varix. I can't um, make out the, but some, the baby, God knows the baby's name. So we'll pray for that. So as we sing, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to go be through his will. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. 
once again because he lives because he lives i can bless tomorrow because he And Father God, we, we thank you for sending your son, who we call Jesus, the yes. Savior of the world, to heal, love, and forgive. And Lord, we think about Bonnie and Justin, oh God, who need to become a new creation, oh God. Because when sin came in the world, that brought death to us. But yet, you found a way to, to become fully human. Yes, yes, yes. So that you can pour out your spirit within us so that we will have life and so that we will too become fully human as you did or that as you are. So we ask, so oh God, for salvation for Bonnie and Justin Ongana. We ask, so oh God, that you will mend their hearts, so oh God, and that, that you will open, that you will just make a way for for, for something to just click, whether it is a song to remind them of who you are, or whether it is someone like us, oh God, that they will see along the, the way and that they'll say, man, I want to know Jesus. So I pray, oh God, that your spirit will hover over them And that their hearts will be shaken and that their hearts will be turned towards you. And Lord, help us, O oh God, the church, to be that light so that they can see you in us. Let's sing verse to women. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the bright and joy it gives, but greater Because he lives Father God, we thank you that you are the great healer, that you are able to heal, that you are able to sustain, oh God. And we bring before you Cheryl's shoulder, oh God, you know what's going on. And you, oh God, who is the creator, you, oh God, who is the preserver and governor of all things, is able to sustain what you have created. 
And Lord, we ask for healing, oh God, for Cheryl. Yes, and we ask healing for baby V. I'll just say that because I can't make out the words. But Lord, you know this baby and you know what he's, he or she is going through. And I pray particularly for the parents, oh God. I pray right now, oh God, that you will show up and you will show out into the lives so that they will know that there is the God. Yes, yes, yes. And Father God, I pray even now for Tommy, Miss Dorothy, the phase, oh God, and as she's now in a nursing home, we pray that whatever she has been through, oh God, that you will continue to take her through it all. And I pray right now for everyone who is not going, who is going through a little, probably feeling under the weather, that you will make a way for them. I pray for Frederick, oh God, and his father. Right now he's in a coma. But Lord, oh God, we know that you who raised Lazarus from the dead is able to do exceedingly all that Frederick could ever think or imagine. So I ask this morning, oh God, that you, oh God, will pour out your spirit in that hospital room in Maryland. Yes, Lord. And that you will fill him, breathe new life within him so that he will be made whole. And I think about the, the twin baby, one of the twin baby father, oh God, that he had met in an accident. And we prayed, and now we saw her, and she was able to say, Lieutenant, yes. he's in the car. <laughs> yes. yes, his shoulders, he's hurting. But he's moving and he's aware of what is going on. And we thank you, God, for that. And we praise you, O oh God, that prayer changes things. And we thank you, God, that you are listening and you have already gone before us to make all our requests be heard and, and be resolved. Because he lives, I can pass tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Amen. Amen. I just love when we pray as the, the body of Christ and he hears and he answers. Yes, he does. He and, does. and that he is not a biased God, that he he'll only does. listens to those who are good and righteous, but he listens to the heart and the cry of everyone. And we thank God for answers prayers. We thank God for that. And I'm going to ask you to turn into your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we'll be reading from verses 13 to verse 18 from the NLT version because I kind of like how it, the words in it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 13 to 18, and I'll invite you all to stand in the presence of the Lord as you read his word. Here is what Paul says. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, and so I speak. We know that the same God who raised our Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself along with you. 
All of these things are for your benefit. And as God's grace brings more and more people to Christ, there will be a great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed Amen. every day. Verse 17. For our present troubles are quite small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us an immeasurable great glory that will last forever. Verse 18 and last. So we do not look at the troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not seen. For the troubles we will see will soon be over. But the joys to come will last forever. Here in it, God's holy and precious word. Amen. And don't sit, don't sit, don't sit. We are going to sing our song. And it says, there ain't nothing going to steal my joy, right? We, we introduced it last week, and we want you to, to get it in your soul so that you will sing it that no matter when trouble comes, as Paul says, it's the things that we see now, it will not last forever, but joy will. Amen? So let's sing. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all
nothing gonna seal my joy. There ain't nothing gonna stop me from worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who is and is to come. And that's why we can say, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together wonderful to me. Light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into the darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that makes this heart adore thee. Together, lovely. Together, 
You're all together worthy. All together worthy. All together wonderful too. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. Worship you. Hallelujah. you because you are good and not just good but good can done Hallelujah. and we worship you oh God because you will bring life to us oh God and, and, and when we, we, we were dead oh God in our sin you came, you died you rose and you breathed upon us and we thank you for that, oh God. And we pray right now, oh God, that as we prepare our hearts and our minds to hear from your word, from your messenger, oh God, we ask that you will rest and abide here this morning, we pray. Amen. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. everyone this is a beautiful Sunday morning you know one of the beautiful things that I've learned is no matter what the weather is it is a good day amen, yes, amen. it could be rain it could be sleet it could be snow once we have life and we have breath we have hope amen. but you know we've been talking about overcoming who has overcome in your life amen. I know I have <laughs> and we are just gone through celebrating an extremely important day where we would like to salute those who served in the armed forces for the United States. We did Memorial Day. So many have overcome struggles when they saw their comrades at arms fall, right? But that day is 
reserved for us to remember the sacrifice so that we can have the freedoms that we have and we can celebrate, that we can go and we can barbecue. <laughs> we can go and we can swim at the beach. We can just fellowship and have fun. And I'm so grateful that the numbers of COVID-19 have been tracking down so that we can gather together that much more freely. But we want to dive straight into what scripture is talking about. And thank you, Lieutenant, for reading the scripture passage for us. It is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 1 through 18. Now, Lieutenant only read from verse 13 through 18, but we're going to go back into scripture. But find that place in your Bibles, because it is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verses 1 through 18. Guess what, friends? That's the whole chapter. It's a very important book, and we have to make sure that we mark this place, because we're going to get into some really important stuff, all right? So it is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 18. But I digress. Have you ever failed at something? I know I have. And I'm not talking about just merely missing the mark. I'm talking about missing so terribly that you've actually completely missed the target, actually probably knock over someone else. You, you've messed up royally. And it is very obvious that you have failed. I have. Friends, the pressures of life can sweep in and cause you to be in a funk. Down in the dumps. When you realize that you have messed up. Whew, it's not a good feeling, friends. I would prefer if I could speak to you on a hypothetical situation. But unfortunately, I'm going to share with you something that's real. Now... Hold on, I'm not going to give you every minute detail, <laughs> but I have to share that I am human too, and your pastors are humans too, and yes, we mess up. <laughs> we, are, we are parents, we are husbands, we are wives, we are leaders, we are we're this, we are that, and we fail at times, just like you do, right? We all mess up. But if you're waiting to hear more specifics, I ask, first of all, that you pray for me and what I'm going through. The worst thing that I've felt in a long time is where I realize that I've failed partially in my role to lead my children as I ought to. My own temperaments, my own quirks have caused them to be so guarded and jaded when it comes on to certain things. Friends, our first responsibility on this earth when we are blessed to have children is to lead them well. Amen? Amen. But friends, I feel like I've failed in some respect. Because I've become so concerned about myself. Please pray for your pastors. Please pray for those who are local officers or the laity in your church, those who assume ministerial leadership in the church, because it is a hard mission, friends, and we are double that with the responsibilities of life. But guess what, friends? With Jesus, we overcome. Amen. The residual effects of 2020 and what still resides with us in 2021 has been very discouraging and it just compounds everything. But this sermon series, Overcome, is not just for you. No, no, not at all. It's for me too. Amen. Because with Jesus, we overcome. Amen. We, in the first installment, we sang, We shall overcome. Remember that? Yes, we shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Don't go any further. <laughs> but when is that day going to come? When is it, 
we're going to really see the effort that we have put in and we, we reap the benefits of the promises of God and we see that we have overcome the struggles, friends. Sometimes I wonder too, because we want to see it now, don't we? We just came through the day of Pentecost when we had Pentecost Sunday and we recognized that the disciples were in a room together and they were praying, right? But if you are going through something and you have some people around you, unfortunately, there seem to be times when they see you falling or you're slipping and instead of them stretching a hand out to help, they grab their phone to record it. I'll say that again, instead of reaching their hand out to help you, to prevent you from the fall, they grab their phone to record it, throw it up on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media, because that's unfortunately a thing now, where there are people who would rather laugh and have entertainment from your failure than to help you through it. But I'm here to remind us all that no matter where you may be mentally, psychologically, physically, whatever you're going through, whatever thing you are dealing with right now, there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. We all need help, friends. And there is no shame in asking for help. And there is no shame in receiving help. We must be humble enough to know that we need help in the first place. We may falter, but if we get the help we require and persevere, we can accomplish. We can still accomplish great things for God's kingdom. Even if people write you off, even if people are recording your failures and are repeatedly reminding you of your failures, he will take you through it, friends. Amen. Take you through it. A story is told of Colonel George Washington Gorthales, the man responsible for digging the Panama Canal. Hey, cool. That's where my mom's from. Actually got to see the Panama Canal, and it is huge. He was on the plan making sure that this canal was being dug, but he had big problems with the climate and the geography because Panama is pretty mountainous, full of jungle. Mm -hmm. But his biggest challenge was the growing criticism back home from those who had predicted, predicted rather, that he would never finish the project. Finally, a colleague asked him, aren't you going to answer those critics in time? Jiathal said, when, his colleague asked, when the canal is finished, <laughs> when I have achieved my goal. Friends, it may take you longer than others expect, but when you persevere, even though you slip and fall, but you get up and you keep on pressing to the mark that God has set before you. And Colonel Gorthals actually ex executed the mission and dug the Panama Canal, which is a extremely used thoroughway for ships. And guess what? Not too long ago, they actually widened it because the ships have gotten bigger. So friends, even though people were criticizing him, what did he do? He persevered and pressed on through it. Let us look at what scripture says. It is, if you remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 through 18. So at the beginning of this chapter, Paul repeats the phrase, do not lose heart. Let me read the scripture for you. And it says, therefore, since God, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Verse 2 Rather, we renounce secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, verse 3, 
Oh, sorry, not verse 3 yet. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone. Technical difficulties. Conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Verse 5. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, Amen. and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Let's stop right there. In the first part of this chapter, Paul repeats the phrase, do not lose heart. Some translations choose the words, do not give up, do not become discouraged, or do not faint. Any of these options make it clear. That we are overcoming is a genuine difficulty. What we are overcoming is a genuine difficulty. It's not something that's easy. It is an obstacle that we need to overcome. Such phrases are not needed when times are easy. You don't need to hear, don't quit when it's easy. <laughs> but it's when it's hard, right? It's easy to give up when things get difficult. So not too long ago, my, my daughter is, is swimming. She's learning to swim. And she's getting a little bit tired as she's getting close to the finishing line. And she's getting tired. And I'm like, no, no, you're almost there. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And she kept going. And she kept going. And then at the end, she got to the wall. And we were like, yay! You made it. Don't give up. When things get hard, you don't need to hear those words, don't faint when things are easy. So friends, sometimes we tend to equate God's victory and provision for us to mean an easy life without anything to ripple our waters. <laughs> Guess what, friends? Unfortunately, that is a complete falsehood because when you believe Christ guess what Satan wants you to fail yes he does he he wants you to fail he doesn't want to see any of us succeeding there are others who have given themselves over to Satan and therefore they want you to fail too but we're not going to be focusing on them we're going to be focusing on God who is going to help us to overcome we overcome because we do not faint. Mm -hmm. We do not lose heart because God's mercy and glory sustains us through the trouble. The cause of this affliction and pain was not revealed in the scripture. Maybe it was self-inflicted through an error or some omission. The scripture text does not specify exactly what it is. But if we recall from my previous sermon, if we are persecuted for doing what is right, then to God be the glory. But God in his ultimate grace and his, his loving kindness to us, even when we do something that is dumb, that's stupid, and we've failed, he loves us. And he helps us through the consequences that should come, right? He doesn't take away the consequences, friends. He helps us to stay focused, to still press through those hard things. If you've done something wrong, guess what? The consequences come. If you've messed up, then you need to wake up and to fix it up so that you can make it better for the next person who may be taking your role. Who knows? But God is always there. And move forward with the humility and trusting God to help. And guess what, friends? He does. Let's look at verse 8 through 9. Verse 8 through 9 of the scripture passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9 reads as such. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, 
persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I know you've heard some songs with that lyric in there, haven't you? But it kind of reads like a spoken word poem. Imagine a community chanting this together as they persist to the end of their strength. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. God's people in the Old Testament, New Testament, and throughout church history have experienced all the suffering that is common to humankind as well as additional persecution because of the name of Christ and their loyalty first and foremost to his kingdom. Can you imagine that if today you say, I am a Christian, that they'll sick lions on you? That's happened. Still today, if you say you're a Christian in some countries, you will be stoned, you would be killed, you would be burnt at the stake. We here in the United States have not experienced persecution, friends. But the scripture wants us to remember, yes, afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down, but never losing hope. Never forsaken, never crushed. Paul continues with the reminder that these troubles, though they may take our lives, when contrasted with God's eternal weight of glory, look light and momentary. In the early days of 2020, the entire globe was struck by a pandemic. COVID-19, a novel coronavirus which turned deadly. As the virus spread like wildfire around the globe, it quickly became clear that, this was no, that there was no certain way for anyone to escape suffering to feel confident that their lives were not in danger. Christians around the world faced a pressing question. Will we respond to this threat? This threat, rather, in a way that cares for our neighbors and not just ourselves, as Jesus requires of us. Now, there's a great article by the Gospel Coalition that examines how Christians have responded to plagues and pandemics in the past and how we suffer faithfully in the present. And it is called what the early church can teach us about coronavirus. I would highly recommend that you read it because it has some really good insights on there. But friends, we must remember that when hardships come, God births some beautiful things out of it. If you recall, I, I noted that the author of Amazing Grace, that beautiful song, that says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch, that saved a wretch like me. Do you hear that? the author recognized that he was not worthy of God's grace. That man was a slaver, and God saved him and redeemed him, and from that horrific life choice that he had made, brought out this beautiful song that is still appropriate to this day because guess what, friends? None of us are worthy of God's grace because we are all wretches, but he saves us. Amen? He loves us. When the author confesses his sin, we also need to confess our sin. Turn from oppression. Seek to help those who are oppressed. And be encouragers 
to those people. And we also, that when we're going through the hard times, you hear that, Sheldon? When you're going through the hard times, be encouraged as well. Yes, when the flesh and the heart shall fail and the mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, with no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Consider how we can turn our eyes on God's amazing overcoming grace in our final hours and beyond. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Amen. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Many in the church are facing or soon will face affliction, disease, loss, and even death. May we fix our eyes on God's eternal faithfulness and with Paul and the first Christians, not lose heart. Do not give up. Do not be despaired. But like what it says in verse 8 and verse 9, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Because God is with us, friends. And with God, we overcome the hard things that life throws at us. And in the meantime, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and our brothers and sisters of the church beside us to help us continue to persevere. So let us see what the Salvation Army flag so gloriously represents. The blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit that makes us pure, that helps us to bear the fruit of the Spirit in our daily lives. So as we struggle, as we struggle through uncertainty, illnesses, and even death, by God's mercy, do not lose hope, Amen. for with him we overcome. Amen. With him we overcome. In spite of ourselves, we overcome. When we've given everything over to God, we overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. shall overcome we shall overcome someday I 
pray this day will arrive sooner than later. By God's grace, be blessed. Amen. We shall overcome. But in order for us to do that, we have to fix our eyes on him so that we will not be distracted when persecution comes our way, when we are struck down. We will not be destroyed because we are looking to him. When it says fix, it's like he put crazy glue and you're just making sure that you're, you're not distracted by anything at all. So that you can get over Amen. what Christ wants you to get over. So we're going to sing that just that, that, that bridge of the song I'm trading. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for its promise will endure. That is joy. When you're going through the struggles, because the struggle is definitely real. Yes, it is. When you're going through it, just remember that if you fix your eyes on it, that the troubles we see now mm -hmm. will be over. Amen. But that, that three-letter word, B-U-T, means that <laughs> but it's going to turn around. Amen. Amen. It's going to change. There will be a, a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. But joy will come. And that joy will last forever. Hallelujah. Because God is joy. Amen. And God is love. Yes, he is. So let's remember that. Thank God for his word and for his message that he doesn't just write it on a piece of paper and say, okay, go figure it out. He always reveals himself to us so yes. that we will understand what he says. Because our God works from complex to simple or just simple, simple. But sometimes we as human beings cloud it up and put our own two cents to it when it's clearly defined in his word yes. what he is trying to say to us. So thank you, Lieutenant, for that word, for encouraging us to go through the week knowing that trouble's going to come once you go through those doors. <laughs> <laughs> trouble's going to hit us, but we need to persevere and press on and fix our eyes on him. So as we close, I invite you to stand.
as we sing the benediction. Praise God, I'm saved. All's well, all's well. He set me free. So before we sing it, just a few announcements. Remember, we are having our um, emergency disaster training on the 3rd at 1 to 4 at the Hope Cafe. And if you're interested, we'll have the link on our Facebook page and Instagram and um, on our Twitter. And if you're interested, just give me a call and let me know that you want to be attending the EDS training as well. Summer is around the corner, so please, please pray for our kids. Last Friday was the last um, of, of school, and Annie is going into third grade. Oh, my. And as he's now in middle school, so pray for our kids, not only for ours alone, but pray for your grandchildren, your aunt, your niece and nephew. Pray for them because they're going to need it. They're going to have to fix their eyes on Jesus. So just remember that in prayer. And remember, Sunday school is now at 11. 45 or whenever our service ends we go right into sunday school and just continue to pray for each other let's sing praise god and say praise god i'm saved Go with God, go with his blessings, go with his might, and remember to fix your eyes upon him so that when troubles and trials come, that you can press on because the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. God bless you all and see you on Wednesday. I've got a no church choir singing.